For millions of years, our earliest ancestors stayed on the African savannas. But at some point, they started to leave. Ancient fossil skulls and tools have been found as far away as China and Indonesia. The question is, when did they leave Africa and why? When Turkana boy was found, scientists thought they had the answer. Here was a strong, large-brained ancestor capable of an arduous migration. He had the look of a world conqueror. In the mid-1980s, we were thinking that a hominid like this one had left Africa, but had done it maybe about a million years ago. For decades, scientists believed big strapping humans like Turkana boy left Africa a million years ago. But new discoveries are showing the migration may have started a lot earlier than that. Dimenisi, Georgia. The mountains and plains of the Caucasus, thousands of miles from the Great Rift Valley, had never produced any fossils of early human ancestors. But then, an astonishing discovery was made. It was a lower jaw, with teeth downward. This way in the ground. So when I started to clean, those front teeth came to light. It became obvious to me that we had found some kind of hominid. But what kind? The jaw seemed to be a primitive form of Homo erectus. But at first, hardly anyone believed it. In 91, when we found this jaw, this was, a lot of scientists were quite skeptical about it. Because it was very hard to imagine Georgia, Caucasus, to be on the map of the human evolution. Since then, Damanisi has been put on the map of human evolution in a big way. The site has turned up a treasure trove of Homo erectus fossils. They've transformed our understanding of who left Africa and when. They showed that the first humans to leave Africa were much more primitive than Turkana boy. People thought that uh, hominids that left Africa were very tall, like Turkana boy, with big brains, advanced technology, and the Manisi proved the, the opposite. At four and a half feet tall, they were smaller than Turkana boy, with more ape-like shoulders and a simple stone technology. They are much more primitive, they have small brains, and at the same time, they were using very primitive stone tools. The next surprise came when they dated the site. The ancient Dimenisi landscape has been built up layer by layer over millions of years. 1.81 million years ago, massive volcanic eruptions deposited a layer of ash. The fossils sat on top of this ash, so must have been slightly younger, around 1.8 million years old. To the vast majority of scientists who believe that all our ancestors evolved in Africa, this was a stunning surprise. How had a small, primitive Homo erectus migrated to the Caucasus almost two million years ago, long before Turkana boy? Scientists now accept that as soon as Homo erectus appeared on the savannas of Africa, they started to leave. Suddenly, with the origin of Homo erectus, we get this shift in body shape, and then boom, they're out of Africa right away. The Georgia fossils proved that Homo erectus left Africa much earlier than previously thought. An even more provocative find shows the migration may have started even earlier. Our own species has only been around for 200,000. What was the secret of Homo erectus's success? The amazing finds at Dimenisi have given us one last clue. One of the skulls belonged to an old man. His jawbone revealed he had lost all his teeth well before he died. That was a real surprise. 
It means that this individual survived two years without teeth. For an elder to have survived that long without teeth must mean that others in the group were feeding him, perhaps even chewing his food for him. I love this story. This was a remarkable testimony from the past about the quality of emotional life that may have characterized Homo erectus. Here is a tantalizing clue to what may be this ancestor's most important legacy, the instinct to look after each other. Nova's got a brand new evolution website with lots to explore about our ancestors. We want to know what you think. Bookmark it today and give us your feedback. Find it at pbs.org.